Apple gets scrutinized, wave your smartphone around to make a 3D model, and Pong, Pac-Man, Space Invaders mashup that will blow your mind. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. It's time for Twit's annual audience survey, and we want to hear from you. Please visit twit.tv slash survey and let us know what you think. It only takes a few minutes, and your anonymous feedback will help us make Twit even better. We thank you so much for your continued support. Twit.tv slash survey. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 308 for Thursday, April 2nd, 2015. This episode is brought to you by Blue Apron. Blue Apron will send you all of the ingredients to cook fresh, delicious meals with simple step-by-step -step instructions right to your door. See what's on the menu this week and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's blueapron.com slash twit. Hello, welcome. I am Megan Maroney. Have you taken our annual audience survey yet? Go to twit.tv slash survey. Tell us what you think. The survey is anonymous. We want to know what you think so we can make this and all our other Twitch shows better. Now let's get to today's big news. European regulators are scrutinizing Apple's dealings with record labels amid an intensifying battle over the future of free ad-supported music streaming services. The European Commission has contacted several music labels and digital music companies with requests for information about agreements between the labels and Apple ahead of their planned summer launch of Apple's music streaming service. The new service will be a reinvention of sorts of the Beats service that Apple acquired for $3 billion last year. Joining us to talk about this story and a few others is Roberto Baldwin from Engadget. Welcome, Roberto. Hi, good so to be on. You have a new gig. You're, new uh, job. New job. You're out in the world in an office. How is Are they treating you okay at Engadget? They're treating me very well. Uh, they have Diet Coke. Ooh. So I've just been, I have, I, I have an IV. You can't see it, but there's an IV of Diet Coke going right into my arm. So I'm doing pretty well right now. Well, I don't want this to be a Diet Coke ad, but it's true that I had almost fully given up Diet Coke until I went to work in an office here where we also have Diet Coke. And it's a totally different thing. You can keep it out of your house, but once it's here and it's hard. It's just there. It's just open the refrigerator and grab it. <laughs> so no let's talk. to know. <laughs> they all right, let's talk about Apple. They don't plan to offer any ad-supported free listening tier. Um, do you? Th what do you think about this? Will this affect what the EU is trying to to warn them about? I think you know. I think their concern is you know Apple already has the iTunes Music Store, which is you know sort of the, the number one store for purchasing MP3s or, or digital music, and then for that company to also go into streaming music, and you know they use very uh, cautious. It's far more cautious than the, than the United States. So that you know, I think they're they're just trying to get a handle on what those deals are, what they mean for other companies like Spotify or or Napster over there in, in Europe. And because, you know, those, those companies don't have a, you know, you can, you can also buy it. It's just streaming. And with Apple, you can buy it. You can stream it. Um, you know, it, I, I think it sort of raises a few red flags over there for them. All right. The Commission's probe also prom prompted finger pointing within the streaming music industry about the source of the complaint. Some even suspect that they were, it was one of the competing companies. Have you heard anything about who is behind the complaint? I, you know, I, I haven't heard who's behind it, but you know, there's there's two pretty big companies. There's one very large company, and that you know, the big big name is Spotify, and you know, Spotify is you know far and away the leader in this space. But if Apple jumps in, you know, Apple has a tendency to jump into a market, something that's already been established, and sort of take over. So you know, if you're Spotify, you're you're probably a little concerned, and you know, the regulators could just check a tech site, really, and kind of get this information about, you know, Apple getting into this, this streaming music service and, and realize that, you know, they're, they're over there, they're talking to record labels, and, you know, they're, they're, they're broadening their, their music uh, offerings. Right. And, of course, this week we saw the announcement of Tidal, the, um, the artist-owned music streaming service that's going to have a really high-quality music and be super expensive, I think, for the high-quality tier. What, what are your, what's your take on Tidal? Ah, uh, I don't think it's going to take off. I think you know it's 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 too niche. It's 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 great for the artist, but if it's not great for the for the for the consumer, then what's the point? If it's you know, what and what does it offer that Spotify and RDO and Rhapsody doesn't offer? I mean, that was kind of the problem with Beats. Is Beats came out, it had this really great recommendation engine, but it wasn't 
you know, it wasn't substantial enough to get people to to jump from Spotify, to jump from Ardio, to jump from Rhapsody. Um, you know, why why would you jump ship just for a, a recommendation engine? So I think Tidal is probably going to be the same. It's going to be in the same boat. Right. You wouldn't jump ship just for Taylor Swift? No, no. I'm sure somebody will, but it won't be me. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people who, you know, saying like, well, I can't stay on Spotify because, you know, there's no Taylor Swift. And, and it's just like, I will buy you the Taylor Swift album and you will have it in your car playing constantly all for your time. children all the time. And then you will stick with Spotify because you yeah. will tire well, of it. I mean, there's, there's also uh, Google Music. Google Music, where it has streaming music, plus you can uh, combine it with the music you already own, which you can upload upload to the cloud. So you could buy Taylor Swift, upload it to the cloud, and then have it in playlist with um, songs you, you are subscribing to you don't actually own. Right. So let's talk about the, your most recent article on how to create better 3D models by waving your smartphone around. Uh, you had a chance to speak to some Carnegie Mellon, Carnegie Mellon researchers. Uh, what... <laughs> What did they show you? So, you know, they're able to, uh, using the, uh, the IMU, which which houses the gyroscope and the accelerometer in your phone, by just, you know, sort of moving your phone around an object and pushing it close, you know, in and out and sort of moving it around, it determines the actual scale of the object. So you could do a 3D scan, sort of, with a uh, with a smartphone before. But being able to to determine the scale, like how big it is, like what what is the actual size, was really difficult. So the ability to actually do that, not only does it help with three D modeling. So you, you know when you're build when you're actually uh, creating these these models or scanning these models with your phone, you actually know the scale of it. You know how big it is, and you know it's also helped. Like a, I, I think I talked about it, where you you know if you're buying furniture, you know you always buy a couch that won't fit through your door, or you're buying a table that won't fit in the corner, or you know. Things like that. And also, if you're in your house and you're like, how big is this area? How big is this, you know, couch? How big is this bed? Um, you know, it's it's actually pretty helpful. I mean, you can bust out the tape measure, but you're... And I, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been to people's houses to help them fix something, and they don't have just regular tools like tape measures or screwdrivers. So, But everyone has a smartphone at this point. So is this technology available now, or is it something that... We, we... They, well, they, the underlying technology they have in an app that allows you to, uh, for like, for sunglasses. But I think they're still working on the, the technology, and I'm sure they're going to, to, to implement it into probably... Some, I'm sure Ikea will probably want, want to start using it, and then I know Autodesk will probably think about using it for their uh, 3D scanning software. Well, how long would it take to... To scan a seven-foot couch at IKEA, I mean, are you? Is it slowly, or do you just really wave it around? Well, it depends. It's dependent on the frame rate of your phone. So, a new iPhone six, which will do two hundred and forty frames per second, you can move it a little bit quicker. Uh, the iPhone five, which does sixty frames a second, you have to move a little slower. You have to make sure that while you're um, actually scanning it, that you don't get a lot of motion blur. Because if you get motion blur, then it, it doesn't have anything concrete or solid to uh, to actually look at. Okay, so let's move on to the most important story, the Pong Pac-Man Space Invaders mega mashup. Tell us about that. It's amazing. <laughs> so you're playing, the, 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 the core is Pong. So you, you, know, you have the paddles on either side, but you're shooting Pac-Man. So you shoot Pac-Man <laughs> through the Pac-Man maze, and you're trying to, you know, if, if Pac-Man hits a ghost, then you, you, you lose a point, and the other person gets a serve. If uh, if Pac-Man hits one of the space invaders, then the invader shows up on that person on the on your uh, on your uh, competitor's side. It's just just really fun, weird game. Uh, I played it. In, it's two players, so you can both play with a keyboard, or if you have game cat game pads, it'll work with that. But you know, it's there. You know, it's not something that you'd probably pay for four or five hours, but it's it's a good 20, 30 minute time waster. It's, yeah, I, I was joking before that it was going to blow my mind. It kind of did blow my mind. My entire childhood just came back to me watching that. Yeah. So where yeah. can pe where can people play it? Where can they get it? Um, you can come to engadget.com and we have it there, and you can just we have a link to the uh, King Penguin is the developer, and it was built uh, as part of a challenge. Excellent. To build a pong game that wasn't pong, like use the elements of pong to create a new game, and this was sort of 
the uh, the best game that was built during that challenge. Well, I love it. Uh, so just about 15 minutes ago, you posted another article. You've been very busy on Periscope. Apparently, Periscope is the new live streaming app. We've You and I have talked about Meerkat back in the day last yeah. month <laughs> when Meerkat was the thing. And now, so long ago. <laughs> Periscope is, of course, the Twitter-owned uh, live streaming app that you just press a button and you're suddenly streaming to the world. But you say that if you check someone's location, a complete stranger... Uh, you could get right down to exactly where they were on there before on yeah. Periscope. Uh, up until today, if you if someone shared their location while they were broadcasting, um, any viewer could swipe right in the broadcast. You could look, and you could just keep zooming in until you got pinpointed their location within you know with probably within 100, 200 feet. So it's. I mean, it would be great if that was for you know news items. You know, I'm I'm on the I'm on the street and and, and we're covering this 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 uh, this event. But for the most part, Periscope is people showing around their houses or talking about their cats or showing off their children. And you know, when you you realize that a random stranger can find your house, literally just show up at your house because they found it on Periscope. That's that's a little alarming. It is. It really is. I mean, that, I mean, that when I was first looking at Periscope, it is complete strangers that show up and there is a lot of like, here's my baby sleeping. Here's my kid going to school. And I, I think it is, it shows the danger of just like so quickly accepting a technology like this without really thinking um, about it. I'm surprised that Twitter didn't know this before, but you say it's fixed now. Yeah. So uh, an update today. And it's also, it also backdates. So if you've uh, saved everything to put Periscope, you know, your old videos, you can no longer zoom in all the way to the house once uh, people have uh, installed the update. Um, and, and you know, if unless you really need the location, my advice is always just turn off locations on everything. Um, just there's if there's no need for people to know exactly where you are at all times, then don't share your location. Right. Yeah. True. That's a good advice for everything. Well, uh, congratulations on your new job, Roberto. You're senior editor at Engadget. Do I have that right? Senior editor senior. or senior editor. <laughs> senior editor. But uh, we can also still find you, of course, at, at Strange Waves with yes. no vowels. And uh, yes, thank you for coming on. I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. Cool. Thanks for having me on. Take care. All right. Coming up, we have a few more tech stories that you will want to hear. But first, we all love to eat, but it's hard to find a meal that doesn't compromise somewhere. Good value, quick to prepare, healthy and delicious. That's where Blue Apron comes in. Blue Apron makes cooking delicious meals easy and fun by delivering fresh, ready-to-cook meals right to your door. For less than $10 per meal, Blue Apron sends you fresh ingredients perfectly proportioned with step-by-step -step recipe instructions, including beautifully printed pictures, making cooking healthy meals really easy and really fun. You don't have to go to the grocery store. You don't have a bunch of waste from unused ingredients. They proportion everything out. Tiny little bottles of vinegar, little t spice packets of the perfect spice for whatever meal they've given you. Blue Apron is perfect for date night, cooking with friends. They offer family plans. I tried the family plan with my family. They loved everything that we cooked. There were kid-friendly ingredients, kale, which they had not, not eaten before. Uh, the whole family can eat well and have fun preparing the meals together. Each balanced meal is 500 to 700 calories per serving, but it doesn't taste like that. Cooking takes about a half an hour. Shipping is free, and the menus are always new. They will never send you the same meal twice. They work around your schedule and your dietary preferences, whether you're gluten-free, vegetarian, you only want to eat meat, they've got it for you. Blue Apron's experts source only the best seasonal ingredients for incredible meals like chili blackened cod with epizote, grapefruit and avocado, or roasted broccoli and fregola sarda salad. You'll cook incredible meals and be blown away by the quality and the freshness. Blue Apron, it's a better way to cook. Check out this week's menu and get your first two meals free by going to blueapron.com slash twit. That's right, two free meals just for going to blueapron.com slash twit. We thank Blue Apron for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. The first Apple Watch has not even been sold to the general public yet, but already 9to5Mac is speculating with a lot of help from ADR Studios on what Apple's second and third generation Apple Watch collections might look like. The speculation is based on supply chain chatter, watch trends, and their own super secret intel on what Apple has in the works. One of the most likely possibilities is new case materials. A report from the Wall Street Journal claimed Apple was experimenting with platinum versions of the watch. Other possibilities could include titanium, ceramics, white gold, and even liquid metal. 
Apple will likely look to include new sensors, new bands, and lower price points. And if they manage to dr drastically increase the battery life, a sleep tracking feature will most certainly be in the works. One of the weirdest predictions would be a FaceTime camera embedded into the display. You know, a smartwatch might not be ideal for snapping pictures, but a front-facing camera for video chat is one of the promises of the Dick Tracy-style smartwatch experience that anyone has yet to completely deliver. So before you even get your hands on that first Apple Watch, start planning on how you can afford the Apple Watch 2.0 or the Watch Air or whatever they decide to call it. I am looking forward to seeing what everyone's going to do with the first Apple Watch that they buy that then becomes obsolete. Um, you can give it to me. I'm willing to take it. Now, the last 12 months have been pivotal for Snapchat, the four-year-old messaging service known for making its posts disappear. But when it comes to trust, the company has some history to overcome. Today, Snapchat announced three developments in an effort to improve security, bolster privacy protections, and engender trust. First, they released a transparency report. For the first time, Snapchat is reporting the frequency of requests for user content and information from law enforcement and national security agencies. They also announced an expanded bug bounty program. Snapchat is now enlisting coders across the goal globe to find vulnerabilities in Snapchat that, Snapchat that could compromise its security, and they will reward the bug finders with cash. And finally, a shutdown of third-party apps. Snapchat is doing this in order to protect its users. They don't publish or allow access to its APIs. Nonetheless, third parties have found their way in and offered apps that compromise privacy on Snapchat in the guise of added functionality. Snapchat not only works with Apple and Google to try to block apps in their stores that violate Snapchat's terms of service, it also started cracking down on users who install these apps. Seth Stein Sternberg, who sold a messaging service to Google for around $100 million, is launching a new startup centered around in-home care. It's called Honor, and it's a combination of an online service that connects in-home caregivers, seniors, and their families. TechCrunch is reporting that caregivers are screened and matched to seniors based on their expertise, and families are shown who took care of their family and what activities they did, as well as how long the caregiver was at home. Honors not is not focused on medical care, but rather on caregivers that help seniors live their lives in their own homes. And this is one of the best parts. Honor also promised to pay care caregivers better. Honor has raised $20 million from what reads like an A-list of Silicon Valley investors. And the service goes into beta test later this month in Contra Costa County, and then will expand to San Francisco. And finally, for those of you out there like me who are excitingly awaiting the delivery of their Amazon Echo, we now have more reasons to be excited. Amazon Echo now supports Pandora, MLB, and MLS scores and schedules. Echo can now play your favorite Pandora stations with just a voice command like, Alexa, play a pop station on Pandora. You can create new stations, pause and skip on your current stations, and even give the thumbs up or the thumbs down to a song, not with your actual thumbs yet, but just by saying the words thumbs up or thumbs down. To gain all the additional functionality, you'll need the most current version of the Amazon Echo app. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Then you'll never miss an episode. You can write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. You can watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific. And of course, don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today. It's every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I am Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.